when taking the easy way out is even harder. Football is back. Oh, and it's the freaking weekend. Welcome to The Hopefulist, a daily talk show hosted by veteran broadcaster Wendy McClure. Join Wendy each day as she shares her life lessons that transformed her from perpetual pessimist to the ultimate hopefulist. The perfect morning show to get you caught up on the day's top stories while sharing insights that will lead to positive transformation and bring out the hopefulist in you. For more inspiration, visit hopefulist.com. And now, here's your host and hopefulist, Wendy McClure. Hello there and welcome to the freaking weekend. That's right, it's Friday, August 21st, 2020, day 314 of Gotta Get On Ellen. Oh my goodness. They said yesterday was going to be magnificent. And they were right. It was brilliant. It was awesome. It was fantastic. The weather was so perfect. Low humidity. I think the temps were in the low 80s. Uh, it was still a little warm uh, when I was sitting outside. I was working up a little bit of, of a sweat when I was in the sun. However, when I went to the shade, I, I got a little chill. So it was really a perfect, perfect weather day. I spent the whole day outside reading, and I will get into what I'm reading in just a little bit, but I have to say that it's pretty funny how life rolls along because as I'm sitting on my dock outside of my house on the water of the beautiful Barnegat Bay, I was feeling a little sorry for myself. Yes. Yes, I was because I kind of wanted to go for a boat ride. So... I wasn't even really sad that I didn't have a boat. I was kind of sad that I didn't get an opportunity to just go out on anyone's boat. I was like, this is such a perfect day to go out on a boat. And I'm I'm thinking to myself, yeah, you know, I want to go out on the boat. I don't have a boat. Doesn't look like any of my friends are going out on the boat. Poor me. Poor me. I am stuck sitting on my dock. Next to the water of the beautiful Barnegat Bay. Poor woe is me. Right? This is why gratitude is so important. It is human nature to want more. Five years ago, we moved here. And within five years, we have purchased our own house. I am starting my own business. I have the opportunity to spend as much time outside and do as I please throughout the summer months, and yet I'm sitting there feeling sorry for myself. Yeah. Ridiculous, right? But as I was saying, it's just human nature to want more. You know, we're we're here now, and we're loving life, and everything's great, and the next step, in my mind would be to get a boat. Not in my husband's mind. He has a completely different vision and dream of what comes next. But we always want more. And that's a good thing. We do always want more. We should want more. But we should also take stock and be grateful for what we have. And that's what I reminded myself of yesterday as I was sitting there feeling sorry for myself. It was funny because I did receive a phone call uh, from my cousin who I hadn't spoken to in quite a while. And, uh, you know, she's like, how are you? What's going on? I said, you know, I'm sitting out, laying in the sun, next to the water. It's a rough life. It's a rough life. So I know how blessed I am. Um, And it's these times when we start to feel a little bit sorry for ourselves that we don't have everything that we want, that we have to take stock And be grateful for all that we do have. Because six years ago, all I wanted to do was live here. All I wanted to do was live here. Five years ago, we rented a place. All I wanted to do was be here. I made that happen. We're here. And then three years ago, four years ago, I wanted to buy a house so that we could live here forever. 
made that happen. So when you're sitting in the midst of all of the achievements that you have made in your life, remind yourself how far you have come before you feel sorry for yourself for what you have yet to attain. You get what I'm saying, right? Gratitude was the first thing I wrote down this morning in my gratitude journal. Grateful to live at the Jersey Shore. That's it. That says it all. Just grateful to be here. Love, love living here. So that's what gratitude helps remind you of, of all that you have so that you can focus on that instead of what you don't have. But meanwhile, still trying to pursue more of what you want. Eagles were on last night. Yes, that's right. The Philadelphia Eagles, they were uh, showing a rerun. You know what? I didn't care. I didn't care it was a rerun. It was a rerun from the playoffs, not from last year, but the year before, because Nick Foles was playing against the Chicago Bears. And it was the first round of the playoffs, and I didn't stay up to watch the whole game. I'm pretty sure we won that game. I'll take the reruns. I'm so starved for football at this point. In fact, I've, I've talked about before when we're watching the football games, and this was an NBC game, and the NBC games have when the guys um, are on camera introducing themselves, what position they play, what school they went to. I, for some reason, just love yelling out, the Ohio State! <clears throat> Excuse me, because it's just fun. So... Uh, my husband was in the bathroom when they were doing that part, and I had forgotten all about it. So I just yelled out, the Ohio State. And my husband comes out of the bathroom, and he's like, did I hear a Ohio State call? And I was like, yes, you did. He's like, yeah, I missed that. I know. Me too. Me too. So they uh, consolidated the game as well. You know, they didn't just replay the whole game. They uh, just shrink it down. I don't know how they went about it, but it started at 8 o'clock, and then I moved to my bedroom uh, and turned the TV on in there to read a little bit and drift off to sleep. And it was only about 9 o'clock, and they were already in the fourth quarter. So clearly they weren't playing the game from start to finish, which is even better, in my opinion. And they had, you know, all these commercials that just remind you of football stuff. And, man... Here's the thing with football. Is it starting on time? What's going on? Clearly the preseason has been canceled. I'm cool with that. But I haven't really heard a definitive, we are starting on this date as scheduled. I haven't heard that yet. So I'm still worried that it may not happen. And it has to happen. It has to happen. I'm so starved for football right now. Normally, you could even see college ball, which I know some colleges are going to be playing this year, but I haven't seen any on TV or anything like that. So we'll see. Keep your fingers crossed that the football season goes off on time, on schedule, and without a hitch because, boy, that would just bring a whole lot of happiness into my life right now because, uh, you know, it's been a crazy year. We all know that. So I'm very much looking forward to some football. I have my Eagles face mask ready to go. Today's topic, I'm talking about books. I wanted to know what book you are currently reading. Now, I posted a picture of me with the book Untamed by Glennon Doyle. It's like a personal growth book. So I'm reading this at the same time I'm reading a novel, which I typically do. Uh, my personal growth books are almost like like work because, you know, I, I want to make sure that I'm in a good spot. I have my post-it flags and my pens and make sure that I have everything that I need to take notes and really get some use out of that book. So that I've been working on for a little while. I've kind of put it off a little bit because I am obsessed, obsessed with this book right now. Uh, World Without End. 
Is it Ken? Ken Follett? Follett? <coughs> Excuse me. My goodness. Hopefully that did the trick. Uh, he wrote Pillars of the Earth. And this is like a second in the series, although they're hundreds of years apart. So it's, you know, there's kind of some uh, descendants of people of the original book, but not really at all. And it's very different in the characters. It's good. And it's so long. It's over a thousand pages. And that's all I've been doing this week is reading this book. And I'm about 80% through. So I have a feeling that I may finish it today. Yes, I do read that much because 200 pages, I'm like, no, that's nothing. I got it. I got it. I got it. And then there is yet another book in this series. Again, not the same people, not the same characters, what have you. That I was talking to my neighbors about who actually got me started on this book. That takes place in the 1900s because the first book took place... In the 1200s, I believe, and this one's in the late 1300s, so it's about 200 years later, and this one takes place in the 1900s, so, uh, or excuse me, the next one that I have on my list, because I do already have that book ready and waiting to go. Of course, I will need to get uh, a couple of fun-loving books in there in between and stop being so darn obsessed, because that one also, 900 and some pages. My goodness, I don't know how this guy writes so much. It's crazy. So those are the books that I'm reading right now. I wanted to hear from you what you're reading. Kim said, We Are Water by Wally Lamb. Wally Lamb is the author of This Much I Know to Be True, and She's Come Undone, which I have read both of those. I've not read We Are Water, so I'm going to put that on my list. Thank you, Kim. Jennifer says, My mom got me this, Stolen Innocence. I've been reading it at the pool on weekends. Karen says, American Dirt. It's a very popular book right now. My neighbor read it. She highly recommends it. Gigi says, if you like historical fiction, I highly recommend America's First Daughter and My Dear Hamilton. Hamilton, very big right now. Linda says she's listening to the audiobook, The Dutch House, read by Tom Hanks. I'm trying to think if I read The Dutch House. I saw mixed reviews about The Dutch House. I don't think I did read The Dutch House. I can't do audiobooks. I really wish that I could. They make me very sleepy. I'm not sure why. Jim says, I am reading Demi Moore's Inside Out. It has the most raw and honest prologue I've ever read in my life. And he's read a lot of memoirs. It could have been my own words in my own prologue. I, I believe, recommended that book to Jim. That was such a good memoir. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, like he said, open, honest, you know, painfully honest. So good. I really, really enjoyed it. So thank you for letting me know some of the books that you're reading right now. And whenever you have a book recommendation, you just throw that bad boy up on the group page. I'm always interested in Books to read. They can be new. They can be old. They can be whatever type of genre, uh, except for um, horror. I don't like horror. I just don't like it. I don't like being scared. So uh, please let me know if you come across a great book, and I, of course, will do the same for you. Blog post for today. You can do hard things. Oh, yes, you can. What we often think is easy can be as difficult as what we perceive to be hard. When we really look at what we want and what we are trying to go after, and the longer we put it off, the more we disappoint ourselves. Does that make sense? We have a goal, and we want to go after this goal, but there's a lot of hard work involved, so we keep putting it off and putting it off, and putting it off. And we disappoint ourselves constantly. The lure of instant gratification stops us from doing so much. We use the old, I don't feel like it, and accept that as a valid excuse. I'm here to tell you, it's not. 
this goes with so many things in life, but the best example is trying to live a more healthy lifestyle. You say you're going to eat food that fuel you and give you energy, but you see that cupcake and you just give in. And that would be okay. But if you're like me, once you fall off the wagon, the disappointment of myself leads to more unhealthy eating. You know how that goes? Oh, I already blew it, so I might as well go to McDonald's now, right? Is that just me? Instead of just skipping the cupcake, or excuse me, just staring at the cupcake, just think about the goals. Walk away. Walk away. What are you trying to do? Eat for more energy? Bless your body with better foods overall so you live longer? Are you trying to lose weight? Look good in that dress for a special occasion? Think about those things when you want to gobble, gobble up that cupcake. It's the same with working out. Constantly torturing myself about when I'm going to do it. I already have a number of home workouts that I rotate, so... I have my set workouts. In that sense, I am ahead of a lot of people. But there are still so many times I still just can't force myself to do it. Why? Because I'm lazy, I guess. That is why I made it a non-negotiable. I'm sure you're tired of hearing those words, but there is no guesswork. I'm working out Monday, Wednesday, Friday, working out today. Because if I didn't do that, I would continue making a plan, then crap out, And then I feel like crap because I've let myself down again. Plus, I'm not getting the benefits I'm hoping to get by working out because I'm not. Meanwhile, my body doesn't change. I may even be putting on some weight. My clothes won't fit. This is also hard. I don't know why we don't think that this is hard to deal with, as hard as it would be to deal with working out. In fact, it's even harder, in my opinion, Because there is shame associated with the results of your actions. Not only are you letting yourself down, but you're not achieving your goals. If you can just get yourself to do what you really want to do, not only will you be on your way to the desired result, but you will also feel great, proud, and stop beating yourself up. Isn't that a hard way to live, beating yourself up constantly, never achieving your goal? Doesn't that sound hard? The same thing when it comes to other goals in your life. Are you working on a project and you keep putting it off because you think it's going to be difficult? It very well may be. But how hard is it when you are constantly not achieving your goals and staying in the same place? How hard is it? When you want to see changes in your life, yet you don't year after year. Do you get to every January and say, this is the year. This is the year I'm going to tackle all those goals. And then the following year, you are in exactly the same place. Isn't that hard? Isn't that disheartening? Aren't you tired of letting yourself down? Aren't you afraid that time will eventually run out? And you won't make your dreams come true. Because here's the truth. Anything worth having is going to take work. It will be hard at times. Isn't it better to go through the tough work that will take you where you want to go instead of feeling how hard it is when your life is not working out the way you hope? You are in control. You make all the decisions in your life. You have the power to keep your promises to yourself and feel proud or break them and never see any change. I choose change. I want to keep improving, learning, and growing. I want to be the absolute best version of myself possible. The only way to get there is to do hard things. But it's not nearly as hard as seeing your your life pass you by. I hate when I flub up a good line. But it's not as hard as seeing your life pass you by. Give that some thought over the weekend. Because it is Cocktail Friday, y'all. That's right. We made it. Oh, I hope you have a fantastic weekend. 
And please be safe in whatever you do. Now go out there and be a badass all weekend long. You know I'm cheering you on. Thank you for listening to The Hope List, hosted by Wendy McClure. For more inspiration, please visit Hopefulist.com. Thanks, and we'll see you tomorrow on The Hopefulist. Friday, Friday, Friday.